invocation and moment of silence by Vice Chairman Riley. Good evening. As spring appears to be in full swing with this nice weather, please be extra aware while driving um, of children and adults out and about, um, riding their bikes, walking their dogs, outside playing. Um, just be careful of them. Um, and I just wanted to give a quick Irish blessing tonight. May your day be filled with blessings, like the sun that lights the sky, and may you always have the courage to spread your wings and fly. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty and, and justice for all. God bless America. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Fire evacuation. We have two exits out of the chamber, one to the rear of the chamber, out to the, out to the, uh, to the green, or to my left, your right, left down the stairs, and out to the rear parking lot. We have roll call, please. Mrs. Riley. Here. Mrs. LeBlanc. Here. Mrs. Hernandez. Mr. Neville. Here. Mr. Ryder. Here. Mr. Renier. Mrs. DePoe. Mr. Rutledge. Here. Chairman Cruzel. Here. Mr. Renier is running late. And I don't think the other two are, have other commitments. Uh, board guests, Mr. Dresick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our first guest this evening, as the board's aware, every year our administrative council works on a set of goals for the district to work on during the coming school year. And last year, you remember the work that administrators produced, such initiatives like Wednesday night, Thursday night school at Enfield High School and JFK, uh, numerous partnerships within the community, and several new professional development tools surrounding our curriculum work, just to name a few. This year we took a little bit of a different approach. So with ever-changing needs of our students regarding their social and emotional well-being, I asked Julie Carroll, our special education director, to take a closer look at two things. One was certain programs that we could look into to <coughs> increase the supports we put in place for our students, and the second was taking a closer look at the number of students we currently outplace and come up with a creative way to bring our kids back home. So I asked Julie to form a new goal team and to handpick team members who each brought specific knowledge and differing perspectives to, the, to a project this big. And you can see most of the team members are in, in the audience today in the first few row, rows where I made them sit. Uh, their efforts produce an exciting yet monumental opportunity, not just for the district, but for the entire community that you're going to hear about shortly. But I am going to spoil one of the surprises right now. In order to accomplish this enormous objective, you will soon hear that it will require the addition of two administrators to oversee this program. I want to take this opportunity to introduce and embarrass Lauren Andrews and Brian Olson, who have been selected to create and ultimately run this innovative program for the Enfield Public Schools. We cannot be luckier or more excited to have two such amazing and talented special education professionals dedicated to this program and to help ensure that our kids get the best possible opportunities they deserve right here in their hometown. I also have to remind the board as well as the public that this these responsibilities are not part of our administrators' daily lives in their job descriptions. As all our administrators working on this initiative are also do doing this above and beyond their daily responsibilities. And for that, I can't thank them all enough. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Julie Carroll and the rest of her Goal Team 5, as they call themselves, to the podium to present this exciting opportunity. Welcome. Thank you. So if we could, I don't know if the cordless mic is there somewhere, just make sure everybody talks into the mic, because okay. we are on TV, and we want people to hear this great, exciting news. Thank you very much. Are we ready with our screen? Is that light on on the, on the microphone? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, just pull it a little closer to you then. Okay, will do. Right, make sure we get it. Okay. Yeah. This is a handheld mic. mic. You can move it from yeah. person to person. Oh, okay. Perfect. We have a mic here and a mic perfect. there. Yes. All right. Great. Okay. I think we're ready to start. <laughs> so, good evening. I'm Julie Carroll, Director of Pupil Services. Tonight, the administrative goal team and I would like to provide you with an overview of an exciting new initiative we've been working on this year the development of the Eagle Academy, an academic and therapeutic school. Over the past several years, like many other school systems across the country, we've experienced an increase in the number of students who struggle with social, emotional, and behavioral needs. 
We're very proud that in response to our students' needs, we have developed interventions and supports to meet these needs, which have been very effective. And yet, we still have a small percentage of students who require special programming in a separate, small, therapeutic type school setting. There are other school districts across the state in Connecticut that have developed their own separate small academic and therapeutic schools within their own school systems. But currently in Enfield, we don't have this option for our students. So at that point, when our students need this level of programming and support, we consider separate schools outside of the Enfield community. In cities and towns such as Hartford, East Hartford, Manchester, New Britain, and others. So as you can imagine, this is not an easy decision. We work closely with the members of our planning and placement teams when we review student information and make recommendations for placement. We don't make the decision lightly because we know that when we make the decision to place a child in a school outside of their home community, their daily lives and schedules are impacted tremendously. These students often need to rise at a very early hour in the morning and they experience a very lengthy bus ride. When we think about where these schools are located across the state and the interstates that our buses travel across, you know, think about the morning rush hour traffic, afternoon rush hour traffic. So unfortunately, some of our children experience lengthy bus rides, which can be quite challenging when we think of the fact that they struggle with regulating their emotions, right? Um, in addition to that, because of the lengthy bus rides, these students may arrive home after school at a very late hour. And unfortunately, because of the time in the afternoon, they're not always able to access extracurricular, after school, or sporting activities in Enfield. And I, I just want to say to Enfield's credit, there are so many rich opportunities for these kids. In addition, we believe that it's important for children to go to school in the community where they live so they know the children in their neighborhoods, they know the teachers who will be teaching them, and they build those strong relationships. So for all of these reasons, we believe that we need to bring our students home to Enfield where they can learn, <coughs> grow, thrive, and be a part of their home community. So at the beginning of the school year, we formed our administrative goal team. We were intentional with our selections. We wanted representatives from special education and general education who have experience across grade levels. So at this point, I'd like to introduce you to our Eagle Academy goal team members. Bridget Birchall, Lori Siegel, Nancy Hayes, Sandra Ingalls, Aaron Clark, Jim Graham, Laura Gagnon, Marilyn Crisotti, Lauren Andrews, Brian Olson, and I also want to acknowledge attorney Christine Cheney, whom we've consulted with throughout our work. And special thank you for attorney Cheney. So at the beginning of the year, as we began our work, we crafted a goal statement to, cra to capture our focus, and it appears on the slide. To explore the development of a specialized learning center that will create opportunities for students to succeed through individualized and specialized instruction, intensive supports, and a network of care within the Enfield community. So again, I want to revisit this very important question. Why are we doing this? Our overarching goal is to bring our students home to Enfield and provide quality educational programming to meet their needs. So as we embarked upon our work as a goal team, we reviewed the facts. We currently have students with social and emotional needs 
who attend special education therapeutic schools outside of the Enfield community. As I mentioned earlier, these children have the longer bus rides. They're not always able to access activities and sporting events in the Enfield community. Um, and, and we're concerned about that. And we want to provide opportunity to program for them in their home community. We believe that creating the Eagle Academy will be best for children, their families, as well as the community. So after reviewing the particular needs of our students, we toured many special education, academic, and therapeutic schools across the state. We visited schools in Hartford, East Hartford, Manchester, and as far away as New Britain, and in towns east of the river, and one along the shoreline. We interviewed administrators in those schools, we spoke with teachers, and we observed in classes. As a goal team, we had discussions and we identified program strengths as well as practices that we might want to do differently for our students in Enfield. And we had some very rich conversations around our visits. In our discussions, we recognize that Enfield has the resources and certainly the commitment to create an excellent special education, academic, and therapeutic school for our own students in their home community. In addition to that, with everything occurring across the state of Connecticut at this point in time, we realize that there is an opportunity for Enfield to become a leader in the regionalization of school services. If at some point, when we're ready, we partner with a neighboring district, we could possibly provide some exciting opportunities for students in nearby towns to access quality educational programming closer to their home communities as well. But I do want to emphasize the overarching goal, Enfield students first. Our goal is to bring our students home. Again, we believe it's in the best interests of our students, their families, and our community. On the next slide, I'd like to review with you a graphic. This diagram is a broad continuum of placements that illustrates how we can meet the needs of all students in our school system. If you look at the diagram on the left-hand side, it states least restrictive. If you look over on the right-hand side, it states most restrictive. So this is commonly referred to as a continuum of placements and it also includes the supports and services that we provide to students based on their individual needs. The starting point for all children are the general education classes. When children require more support, we consider accommodations and modifications. For students who have disabilities, the planning and placement teams may recommend specialized instruction. Specialized instruction can occur in general education classes. It can occur in what we refer to as our resource room settings or a combination of both. And again, all of those decisions are made by members of the planning and placement teams. We do have some children who require a more intensive level of programming. These are our children who really need to learn in a smaller group setting. They need more intensive supports. They need more attention from the staff, as well as access to uh, the general education setting for inclusion purposes. And again, all those decisions are made by members of the planning and placement teams. At this point in time, if we look at the diagram in Enfield, of course we have our general education classes. We provide accommodations and modifications and specialized instruction, and we do have separate special classes with opportunities for inclusion when appropriate. We have these interventions in our schools right now. But if you look on the diagram where you see the X, and then above it, it says separate school, what we refer to as our outplacements. In district, we refer to them as outplacements because these schools are located outside of Enfield. At this point in time, we don't have a specialized academic and therapeutic school, so we send these children out. The goal of our team this year, our initiative, 
was to develop our Eagle Academy to fill the void on this continuum, and most importantly, to bring our students home and provide quality educational programming for them, as well as for children who come to us in future years and who need more specialized programming. Moving along the continuum, for students who have medical needs and appropriate medical documentation, these children may receive homebound instruction, which is, of course, a more restrictive placement. And then finally, at times, uh, we, for example, we might have outside agencies who place students in hospital or residential settings. And of course, that would be the most restrictive placement. So in summary, that's a broad continuum of placement. Uh, I could expand upon this, and in a few moments, Mr. Graham and Mr. Olson are going to do that for you. But I'd like to wrap up my part just by emphasizing to you that we're very excited about the initiative work we've done this year. And again, we think it's good for kids and their families and our community. Okay. So over the next few slides, um, I have um, I get to go through the wide array of supports that we already have in district. Um, and um, in each of those stops, uh, the first few stops along that continuum. So starting off um, with the social and emotional supports that we have in place now, uh, we have our PBIS initiative, or Positive Behavior Intervention, Interventions and Supports, and I was at the, uh, the presentation that, uh, that, that, that we already had, um, and it's been wonderful. Uh, we have teams of teachers as well as coaches installed in all of our elementary schools. We have our transition classrooms at the primary schools, um, and those were developed last year to help support students in developing the regulatory skills necessary for success in a larger classroom. Um, we have tiered interventions at the middle school and high school. We have full-time counselors in all of our K-12 schools to help out where needed. And we also have social work services available at all levels. And those are supports that are in place for everybody. Um, students that we have um, in district who need extra supports beyond that, um, you know, would be able to receive special education and related services such as occupational therapy, uh, physical therapy, speech and language services, um, and that those would be for students who are identified at all levels, um, PK-12. Um, we also have specialized classes, and we'll break that down a little bit too, but right now those specialized classes are really the last stop on the continuum um, that we have to offer here in the district as of right now. And those are at all levels, and those are for students who need the, that, that intensive support. Um, I think that everyone in the room should be really proud of what Enfield already has um, to, to, to offer for, our, for all of our kids. Um, and I'm really excited that uh, we'll be able to share more tonight about what we're hoping to bring to, to, to our kids. So starting off, um, that's that first star on the next slide is our general, uh, general education classroom um, setting for students um, in the general ed setting, but also for students who have individualized education plans. Um, and very often, uh, we're able to push in and students uh, can receive instruction, um, specialized instruction in their areas of need right there in their classroom. And that you'll see down a little bit farther down, um, very often that, that involves some co-teaching between special education teachers and general education teachers. Um, we also have the, uh, the option for kids who, who need it, um, some specialized instruction in, in those areas of need in a resource room. And again, very often, um, it's some combination of all of those three. Um, we offer accommodations, modifications, behavior intervention plans if necessary. Um, again, related services such as occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech and language. Um, and we also, for older kids, offer, the, uh, offer secondary transition services um, to support them. Um, so that's that first stop along the continuum outside of the, the, the general education classroom. The next stop, like I said earlier, um, is really what we have as a last stop here in district. So these are our separate classes. Um, we have separate um, classes, these specialized classes at, at every level. So the, uh, the elementary level, we have our educational counseling program, or ECP. 
At the secondary level, we have um, the program that, um, the SOAR program, the successful outcomes for achievement and responsibility. Um, and they offer very similar supports. So there's specialized instruction, again, related services. Um, we're able to accommodate for, for our students, uh, make modifications. We have behavior intervention plans in place um, when needed. Um, and there are, uh, the, the key here is additional adult support. Um, that small group setting um, really helps students um, with social emotional behavioral needs um, and, and helps us to, to form the relationships necessary uh, to make sure that those uh, students are successful. Um, also, um, in both of those programs, um, there's a counseling component. So we have counseling services uh, from our social workers. Um, we have the ability to um, access general ed education classrooms for inclusion whenever, uh, whenever possible. Um, and, and that's different for every student. Um, another key component are, are, are consultative services for our BCBAs, or be board certified behavior analysts. Um, and again, up until right now, this is where our um, level of support stops here in district. And with that, I'll hand it off to Mr. Olson. Thank you. So again, in referring to the continuum that's in front of you, I am currently a teacher in one of the separate classes, ECP, specifically at the primary level. Uh, within my classroom, we're providing specialized instruction in a small group setting. Even though we provide many resources in my separate classroom, we're still based in a traditional school setting. You know, you're going through our school, it's busy, there's a lot going on. And sometimes, you know, um, some of my students may need some more intensive supports and services that we can't provide within that traditional school and within my, just my small room. So, you know, now we're looking at where the Eagle Academy will fit in, all right? So this is an opportunity to have an academic and therapeutic school for the students that we can send to and keep them within our district and our community and we don't have to send them out of our district, you know, and we want to keep them, you know, within our family here. So on the next slide, so what's going to make the Eagle Academy a little bit different than say, you know, ECP, uh, my program. So, you know, it's going to be academic and therapeutic school and the first thing we do is we have to kind of reference um, our little diagram on the left, that's the framework for systematic social emotional learning. And if you look right in the center for that social and emotional learning, there's five key skills that we may have to teach students to develop. Self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. So we do have you know, some students that have difficulty um, learning these skills and also utilizing those skills. And as they develop those skills, they're going to be able to access the classroom, the curriculum, the instruction, be part of the school, school members, and community members. So it's very important. So that kind of ties into our first bullet point there for the specialized and collaborative educational team. So we're looking to hire you know, an instructional staff that has experience working with students with social and emotional needs. Uh, we know, um, you know hiring a special education teacher, there's a broad spectrum, a uh, variety of disabilities that uh, people may work with. So we're looking to uh, find those teachers that kind of have that niche that really enjoy working with students with these type of needs. Um, so in a small school setting, emphasizing relationships with all students and individualized instruction line with distance curriculum standards. Um, you know, it's very important that all the staff know all the students and how to work with each student. That's very important, having multiple grade levels, you know, and, and that's what we're going to really emphasize, the relationships that we're building within the family, within the, with the students, with the families, and with the instructional staff. Um, it's still aligned with, you know, my program that I currently teach and we'll still have the services of a comprehensive board certified behavioral analyst, um, licensed clinical social worker, psychological OT, speech, PT services based on individual student needs and also have the opportunity for extended school year. That's something we, we're going to offer within the school is to have that extended school year opportunity for students that need to access that. We'll have uh, behavior technicians with specialized training and, uh, you know, what I really like is the responsive learning environments for the purpose of sensory integration strategies for processing, calming, and regrouping. So designing the school, we're going to look at finding areas in the school that, you know, we can have students go in and say, maybe they just need a movement break and, and, you know, we can provide some resources for them within PT, OT, and things like that that, you know, makes it a little difficult in the traditional school setting to, to access. And I think the most important thing is the opportunities for participation and fill community for educational, athletic, and so social community activities you know, having these maybe long bus rides, you know, a lot of the students, especially at the secondary level, you know, I was kind of a sports guy, a coach, former coach here in the district. Um, you know, we want to give students every single opportunity that they can to be part of the community, and that's what this school 
can provide. So as we have talked about, I think the most important aspect of Eagle Academy is the smaller school setting. Um, you know, we provide a lot of these services in our K-2 and 3-5 schools as we are now, um, but the, really having that smaller school setting where this is the focus of the school. Um, meeting the unique academic and social emotional needs of all of our students. Um, as Brian and I know from experience, um, and as we've all observed in other schools, doing so in that smaller, more collaborative setting is more successful for the kids in the end. Um, we will have elementary and secondary classrooms with flexible grouping based on the student needs. Um, special education teachers, as we said, that have a background in working with students with profiles similar to these students. Um, be behavior technicians that are specially trained by the BCBA to support students' social, emotional, and behavioral needs. They'll also work with the special education teachers to work on the academic piece as well. A uh, licensed clinical social worker, as we said. Uh, BCBA and psychiatric consultative services based on the student needs. Speech and language, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and nursing services also based on the student needs. Um, and then, of course, the special education coordinators. Um, as a school staff, we want to focus on knowing the whole child and supporting their needs as much as we possibly can in the school. So we're really excited about everything that we've done this year, not about presenting right now, but everything else that we've done this year. Um, we believe Eagle Academy will provide numerous benefits for both our students and for Enfield as a whole. Um, we can provide quality educational programming with, again, opportunities for extended school year. We want to focus on creating meanif meaningful relationships with our students and their families. They're a huge piece to this puzzle that we need to include. And all of our staff, the teachers, behavior technicians, mental health professionals, and related service providers will all work collaboratively with all of the students. And that is our one of our main goals, is for everybody to know all of the students. Um, and again, to know the whole child, to know what makes them tick so that we can really help them the best we can. Um, the building has, as thoughtfully as possible, been planned to include spaces for students of all ages, both indoors and outdoors. And again, as we said before, we have the chance for Enfield to be a leader in the regionalization of school services by partnering with local districts. Our location is ideal. Um, we're right next to all the highways, and again, this is a chance for us to be at the beginning of that. Again, as we've also said, Enfield is an amazing community, and we have so many activities for kids and their families, both during the school day and after. But a portion of our students do not get to participate in these at this moment. By bringing our students home to Enfield, we will offer them invaluable opportunities to participate in community activities with their peers, which will also help to foster those positive relationships, and that will help them tremendously. Most importantly, going back to our why, we know we have the resources and the commitment to give our kids what they need here in Enfield. I'll turn my mic on now. Any questions, Mr. Ryder? Can we copy of the PowerPoint? Yeah. It's hard for us to follow along because <laughs> um, some of the fonts are small from our side of that. Um, I loved everything that I heard, and I think there's a need for this, and I think we have the right people in place to enact it. Um, I I'm proud of the ideas that you put forth and the amount of time and research that went into it, and uh, I just wanted to say that, so thank you for your part in this. Mr. Neville, for decades I've been working in this district and looking at our kids leave town to go get an education in another another district. I've always kind of looked at it as kind of a sense of, with a sense of failure that we couldn't do that for these kids in our own town. I always thought we had better teachers and better programs. Having gone out and observed, I, I'm, I'm convinced of that. I'm guessing that you found the same thing when you went out today. So I applaud you for coming up with this idea. For decades, I've heard people talk about problems. For decades, I haven't always heard positive solutions coming out of it, so I applaud you for putting your heads together, the whole crew of you, because I know how much work it takes to put together a program like this. So thank you very much on behalf of our children. Mm -hmm. Ms. LeBlanc. Well, I have to say I want a copy of the presentation because the whole time you're talking, I'm sitting here saying, wow, I can't believe this. Wow, I can't believe this. So I'm probably going to rewatch the meeting tomorrow, but I want to thank you guys because 
your focus is students, and that's what we're all here for. And I have a huge sense of community. I've always, if you know me, you know that about Enfield. And I remember when we redistricted K through two and three through five, I was fearful we were gonna lose that feeling of a community, especially when you come from, I, my kids went to a small school. Um, but that's what we're trying to get back to. Um, I feel, you know, with the consolidation of the high school, um, the referendum passed with JFK, um, I think that that has become a goal of the district is to keep the Enfield kids in Enfield so we can be part of the community. It's a win-win. Um, when parents feel that they're part of a community, it's just, it's just a good thing for Enfield. So I really appreciate all your work. Um, welcome to Lauren and, and Brian, and I think this is a, a great opportunity for the kids and Enfield all together. So again, thank you to everybody on the team. Um, I agree, I think the right people are in place, and um, we are excited for you, we are excited for the kids, and we can't wait to see what, what the progress is, so thank you. Ms. Ryder. Ms. Ryder. Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Riley. Well, first I wanna say, if I can get up and give every one of you a hug, I would. I <laughs> um, but everybody that worked on this, on that, what I saw on that first screen, everybody on there, in my opinion, are extremely talented individuals and very dedicated, and I just think that you guys hit a home run with this. But the number one thing is we're, we're gonna bring our kids home, and that is so important for them to be in a familiar area, close to where they live, it's perfect. And we're gonna be providing our kids with every opportunity that we can to make them comfortable, successful, and cared for, and integrated into our community and school system. It's like awesome. And then with the whole possibility of regionalization of services, like we've said before, Enfield knows their kids best, and if we keep our kids here, we can provide them with everything that they need. So what you guys did was phenomenal, and I cannot wait for this to start, I think it's gonna be a success and I just wanna thank you very much. Mr. Rutledge. Uh, good evening, you know, I just, uh, just wanna say you guys have done a phenomenal job project managing this. Um, the information you presented tonight, I think this is, I think this is truly wonderful. I mean, one of our mottos here is to make a, try to make a difference if, for every child every day. And I think what you guys are doing is really putting together the last pieces of that puzzle. Um, the programs that you mentioned, allowing our students to be able to actually have the after school and the extracurricular activities here, to become you know closer with their cohorts, their friends, their other members of the community. Um, I think that's wonderful. I was gonna ask just one question. You did mention, and Charlotte, you mentioned this too, the, um, you know, the regionalization, the intra-district cooperation. Can you elaborate on that just a little bit? Um, maybe I missed it. Again, the font size was a little small up here, and my eyes aren't the greatest uh, for that PowerPoint, so I'll look forward to reading that when I yeah. have a larger version. But if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Sure. So um, once we're up and running, I look forward to partnering possibly with neighboring school systems. Uh, we have, we're surrounded by smaller school systems uh, who don't have what we're going to have next year, and that's our academic and therapeutic school. And so, like us, uh, up until this point, they look to, you know, far away towns and cities to outplace their students. But if we have openings in our school here in Enfield, we can offer high quality educational program tailored to the children's needs, um, for them much closer to their home community so they can get home sooner after school and they can have all of those rich and meaningful childhood experiences that we want all of our kids to have. Mm -hmm. So being last, she stole my win-win analogy. <laughs> she stole my home run analogy. So I'm gonna say grand slam home run that this is. <laughs> this is absolutely phenomenal for the town. This is we thank you for all the hard work you put into this and make it so. That's all I have to say, make it so. Yeah. Anything else? I, how about a round of applause yeah, for yeah. Great job. <laughs> Any other comments, Mr. Dresick? No, I just gave them one direction. Go ahead and do it and don't screw it up. And they proved <laughs> me right. So I couldn't be happier with Obviously, you've gotten a little window into what Andy and I have been able to see over the last several months, and um, just can't reiterate how exciting this is, and this is really a monumental opportunity for us as a community. So, and we couldn't be happier to have the right people in place to do this, and I can't thank this group enough. Um, you know, 
Julie doesn't get an opportunity to have a lot of good news during her day sometimes, and I'm glad that, that, that we get every now and then get to bring her back and get her to smile. So, uh, and also I want to thank, I know Julie mentioned, I want to thank Attorney Chinney because when we set out to do this, um, there were a lot of questions that we didn't know or didn't have the answer to, and oh, we always want to consult with legal counsel. So uh, Chris has been behind this idea since it started, and, and we really wouldn't be this far without her either. So all of you who are in the room, part of this, thank you. Um, and they've already said everything, so no. you didn't screw it up. Whoever's, yeah, whoever's here for it, please stand up and be acknowledged because... Yeah. Thank you again all. Okay. This is Thank you for your this support. Is, this is great news for Enfield and make it so. That's all I that's all I'm going to say. Make it so. Thank you again for coming out all. Mr. Dresick, superintendent's report, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our student representative Jacqueline's here. We'll start with her this evening. So uh, first of all, we have AP exams are the week after next. So we are all, all of us AP kids are preparing for those with a lot of excitement, as you can imagine. Um, in the same vein, May 20th is awards and scholarships night for all of the nominated students. So we're really um, looking forward to welcoming all of the kids who have been nominated and um, their families as well. Um, involved with extra extracurriculars, the AHS Lamplighters are presenting their production of Willy Wonka um, this upcoming weekend. The showings are this Friday at 7 and this Saturday at 2 and 7 in the AHS Auditorium. Um, I have a lot of friends in the Lamplighters Club and they're really, really excited to perform. Um, junior prom was last weekend and everyone I've um, had the opportunity to talk to said it was a great time, so that was success, which as somebody on the student council, that's always good to hear. Um, senior prom tickets will be sold this week and next week for $70 outside the cafeteria, so any parents or um, children who will be paying. <laughs> um, and as the school year's end is approaching, we have a lot of new like senior events and um, ending of the year events that are happening, so stay tuned for those in future meetings from Matt and I. And I have a comment for Daniel, who's working for the man in the big yellow suit with red shoes tonight, so he couldn't be here, but I told him I would have say hi to him. Shout out to him. <laughs> so I hope the, the analogy is where he's working. But I won't say the name, but... We'll go from there. Mr. Dreser, continue. Uh, I don't know if we have corporate clearance, but uh, I think people can figure it out. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a reminder that all Enfield Public School students will be dismissed early with lunch uh, tomorrow on April 24th for a staff afternoon professional development workshop. Uh, enclosed in your packets is an invitation to attend the uh, EHS third annual honors breakfast beginning on April 30th, May 1st, and May 2nd. Uh, board members are encouraged to RSVP by April 23rd. Those will take place in the morning. Uh, kindergarten registration, we will hold the 2019-2020 kindergarten registration on Wednesday, May 1st at the Enfield Annex, formerly known as Enrico Fermi, uh, from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Enclosed in your packet is a press release with additional information. Our LEGO event, the Building Tomorrow Project, will hold the celebration on Wednesday, May 8th at the Stowe Early Learning Center at 6 p.m. This event is open to all students in grades K through 5 and their families. There's a flyer enclosed in your packet as well. There's also a listing of the April and May events in your packet as well. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, there is one item on the superintendent's report that is not in your packet. Um, the last issue is not listed on the agenda. However, I feel compelled to respond given the events that have taken place since our last meeting. Uh, at our last meeting, uh, a parent made a decision to address the board concerning matters related to this parent's child. In the coming days, it's been brought to my attention through social media a criticism of not only the board, but myself and the entire district. So I want to take the opportunity to set the record straight for both the board as well as the public watching at home, as most of the information being disseminated is not accurate. Exactly two weeks prior to our last board meeting, Mr. Longy and I met with this parent to discuss concerns she had about a social media post involving her child. During that meeting, this parent shared with, with us that her main concern was not the post itself, but rather with another adult reposting her child's image in a social media setting. 
I informed this parent that I had no control over what other adults did on social media, but if the post was disturbing, I would like to see it so I can bring it to the attention of the Enfield Police Department. At this point, the parent stated that she did not want to do that and that she had resolved the issue with the other adult on her own and she considered the matter closed. This parent did loosely refer to other incidents involving race where both Mr. Longy and myself asked for more information as this type of behavior would not be tolerated in the district. We also stated that if there were adults posting these items, we would refer the matter to the Enfield Police Department. At no time did this parent show us any evidence of information that she was in possession of that would be classified as racially insensitive. When pressed, this parent branded her phone and then claimed that she did not want us to see anything that she was in possession of, rather insisting that the matter was resolved and she just wanted to make us aware of what other parent, the other parent had done with her child. At the conclusion of this meeting, I reminded this parent that if she chose to bring these concerns to the board in a public meeting, neither the board or I could respond as most of her concerns were regarding other students that she used by name, and we were not in a position to discuss other students' confidential information in a public format. I also expressed to this parent that as frustrating as this may seem, the board could not respond to her concerns during public comment, and not to take that as a sign of uninterest, rather it was just parliamentary procedure. I then asked this parent if she was satisfied with what we discussed in our meeting, to which she stated yes. I then asked her that if she ever had another concern, she could reach out directly to me and I would try to address the issue and could probably do so much quicker than if she chose to come to a board meeting. She agreed and stated that she wouldn't be coming to board meetings to discuss her children again, as she has numerous times, and that she would just call Mr. Longy or myself going forward. She thanked us and left our office without incident. At this point, I believe the matter to be resolved. As you can imagine, I was as surprised as anyone to hear her comments at the very next board meeting, contradicting what we had discussed during our meeting exactly two weeks to the day prior. Since those comments were made and the subsequent public comments on social media ensued, there have been several issues the district and its staff has had to endure. First, the questions surrounding equity and tolerance have questioned the morals and dignity of our staff and administrators. So the board is aware the district and our schools are involved in several initiatives on this topic, and our schools do a tremendous amount of work with our students and staff surrounding equity and diversity. Because this question came up regarding our high school, I'm going to list several projects that are currently underway at Enfield High School. In Enfield High School's efforts to promote racial equity, we have an open choice partnership where Enfield High School is working with our open choice partners to do the following. Gloria Mengual from the open choice program, train staff in facilitating civil discourse among students and staff. Organize two groups of students to participate in study circle sessions, which are focused discussions about racial identity and equity. This occurred on April 2nd and 3rd. Study circles have students and staff engage of, in topics of race and identity and ends in a co-created action plan. The goal is to create systemic change developed and supported by staff and students together. Administrators attended a two-day professional learning on implicit bias. This is the second year of participation. Students are meeting this week to discuss next steps with hope of presenting to the board at a future board meeting. Dr. Gerald Harrison. Dr. Harrison is from Creck and Enfield High School has been working with him for the past year. During this time, he's done the following. He organized a minority recruiting fair attended by the Enfield High School administrators on March 28th. He facilitated a whole staff professional learning session on race, equity, and social justice. He offered monthly PD offered by Dr. Harrison to the Enfield High School equity team was working on an action plan to improve racial equity at Enfield High School. Focus groups with students, parents, and staff to collect data on equity at Enfield High School. After the collection of all data, Dr. Harrison supported study circles as a better approach to addressing student concerns rather than a whole school assembly. He agreed that this approach has more potential to impact positive change than a one-time event such as an assembly. Our equity team. This team evolved out of a kite community training three years ago. This team consists of administrators and teachers who are passionate about promoting racial equity at Enfield High School. They participated in Dr. Harrison's trainings, led staff PD in culture responsive instruction, will be launching the study circle process with staff and students, and created a diversity club for students. The diversity club is a student organization de devoted, pr devoted to promoting and supporting diversity at Enfield High School. They've attended field trips to discuss topics related to diversity with other school districts. They organize school events to promote and support a diverse student population and provide a safe place for all students. Our social studies department. 
They've hosted a regional, regional conversation with students from other schools regarding controversial topics that require civil discourse. Topics include race, among others. They host the Human Rights Day during Eagle Block, where students led workshops on a variety of topics, including cultural awareness. And then the Enfield High Administration. They attended community kite sessions on racial equity, led staff PD on implicit bias. Two members participated on the equity team, organized the diversity task force that created the equity team, attended conference, conferences on restorative practices. They used restorative practices such as mediations and making amends when disciplining students. They implemented Wednesday night school to reduce suspensions and they're participating in a nationwide consortium with Duke and UCLA on trauma-informed practices with a strong focus on culturally responsive practices. These are just a few examples of work we're doing in one school to promote racial equity and for some to question that on social media without the benefit of fact is irresponsible and in my opinion deplorable. Lastly, in the subsequent days following our last meeting, some of you shared with me posts from online forums that were critical to the board of the district. Let me remind all of you something I told you when we first met. I am not on social media, and I have no intention on joining anytime soon. My only presence is a Twitter account for the purpose of school cancellations and delays, and occasionally checking the injury status of Aaron Judge. That's it. What I've learned is that Facebook has now become a cesspool of negativity, and I made an informed choice to not participate in it. However, I also realized that when I took this job, I signed up for criticism in any form that people choose. If someone wants to criticize me, question my decisions, or even my intelligence for that matter, that is all fair game. However, when the comments then turn to degrading and inflammatory insults against teachers or staff, by name, a line is crossed. In the past two weeks, I've been disgusted by the information shared with me from online forums making false claims against teachers, and I believe and I have an obligation to address this tonight. These incendiary comments, without facts behind them, have now reached a level of seriously disrupting the operation of our district, in which I have an obligation to defend. I can't control adults behaving badly. I can, however, appreciate the irony of comments being made about everything a teacher or the school isn't doing to solve a problem, which we have no proof that exists, only to find out that not one of the adults with the courage to type had the decency to inform either the school or the police. In one case, I had to pull an administrator away from dealing with a student in a real crisis to chase down an internet rumor started and perpetuated by adults, only to find out that not one adult in the school even heard of these accusations. This type of behavior needs to stop. As I said, I cannot control adults behaving irresponsibly, but I can't control how the district responds to internet trolls. I do believe and appreciate the board members who send me posts and that you all feel I should be aware of certain things. However, I'm asking for you to stop sending me instances of adults spreading false and defaming slander that you see online, as I cannot use the precious resources we have chasing gossip instead of helping children. I also have an obligation to make you aware that given the recent activity in online forums, several investigations are currently underway. To my knowledge, investigations with both the police as well as legal counsel are ongoing. So I want to make it clear that I will not be commenting on these issues in public or private in the foreseeable future. As you can see, the board's attorney is in the audience tonight, and she has advised me to remind you that although you all have First Amendment rights to speak as you choose, given the nature of these investigations and the consequences that could be forthcoming, we have been advised that the board should refrain from commenting as well. Ultimately, that choice is yours, but it's my responsibility to share this advice with you. It saddens me that on a night when we are introducing a monumental program that could have positive ramifications for our town for decades to come, I have to give a statement such as this. I do apologize for the length of the statement and the fact that I felt compelled to give it this evening. However, the decision to speak up to defend the integrity of our staff and our teachers is not something that I will ever apologize for. And that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Dresick. Any questions for the superintendent? So we move on to audiences. Audience, we have none. Does anyone want to speak? Please. Could we get their names, please? Okay. Want us to mark it down, Walter? Then we'll please. See it. Okay. No I problem. don't. I don't need to see it. Just. Oh, okay. Yeah, usually we have a sign-up sheet, but that's okay. Okay. No problem. 
Marie Name and address P for the record, please. Marie Pisner, 25 Rice Street. Now, I remind you of three minutes. Okay. I just want to say I've always been very proud of our Renfield school system. I had two daughters that went from K all the way to 12th grade. They were both college ready. One is a school teacher in Enfield, which makes me very proud, and the other is back in Connecticut with a, a well-paying job. Um, it, it makes my heart happy with what I heard tonight. Um, it is time for our kids to come home. Um, and I just applaud the team that you put together. I know Lauren very well. I think she'll do an amazing job. And I applaud the school board and our superintendent for looking ahead, looking ahead at, at what's going to put our kids ahead of the curve. Um, but I have a couple of questions um, because I've heard a lot of rumors about this because everybody has a rumor mill, you know. Um, so there's a couple of things. And I think if you're watching at home, the people are going to ask themselves these same three questions. So first of all, where is the academy going to be housed? Because that wasn't mentioned today. Um, and also, do we have the amount of kids that we're going to start with? Um, is, is there something there? And I know it's going to need some extra staffing, um, but I think in my head, I know what it costs to have a child go out of town. I can only imagine we're going to save all that money by bringing them to town. But I'm thinking of the people that are listening at home. And those are three points that I don't think were brought up. So we might want to just, um, if not tonight, have that material out there for people who um, are curious. I mean, I personally know, because again, I have a daughter who's a teacher, so there's a little rumor mill going around. Um, and I'm happy about it. Um, and to your point, Chris, Again, I agree with you. We can't stop adults from behaving poorly. Um, and I just feel bad um, <laughs> that it's being spread down to our kids. So again, I applaud you for, for what you said tonight and um, for standing behind your teachers and our district. So I thank you for the job you do, and also you, Mr. Longy. So thank you, board. It's always a pleasure. Have a great thank night. Thank you. Anyone else? Mary Ann Turner, please. I'm sorry, you did that on purpose. I did not. You were on my list. We will, we will answer questions later. Mary Ann Turner, 7 Meadow Road. Good evening. Haven't seen you guys in a long time. I just watched you from home. Um, congratulations on the new project. Excellent work. Um, I always knew that we had uh, the right staff of people right here in our grubby little hands, and it's exciting to see that you're using their talents so well. I'm sorry I came in a little late, so you may have answered some of the questions that I'm going to ask. Is there going to be any problem moving kids um, that have these special needs into one place? I, I, I don't have any kids, but I've always heard that th there's kind of that mix need, so I don't know if that's been addressed or you this this will work out just fine and I did add, I had the questions about you know do we have enough children to be in this facility but I'm assuming that you're going to have the you know if you could name it, I don't know where you're putting it I mean I have a rumor about it as we know um, so once you answer that I'm sure you'll tell us how much uh, space you're going to use and what your capacity would be and the implementation of the savings. My guess is that this is going to be a huge savings in the fact that you're not going to have to have the busing of the children going out. I have no clue how many children leave Enfield every day for special needs. So um, you probably have taken that into consideration. So if we have the facility and we've got the experience and the teachers, and it sounds to me like you've actually added a, um, a good line item budget wise and when you go out to the other surrounding school or towns they'll probably embrace you because I'm assuming that it'll cost them less than uh, what they're paying now so um, and and this is only because I don't even understand what you were talking about uh, Mr. Dresick I don't know what ra uh, racial equity even means so we probably need to just take me offline and educate me on the language um, I didn't even realize that we didn't have an equ that we have an equity issue or what that's all about. Um, yes, it is um, 
I'm not a big Facebook person. I just have to stick my nose in it periodically just to see what's going on. But I do see some of the worst of people when they sit behind a typewriter, but they're not out front sitting here doing your job or even in this audience. And that's pretty sad. And I know that our kids sometimes act like the adults. So anyway, good for you. Your uh, editorial was great, and I hope that you'll put that up on your website for others to read. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I declare public communications closed. Board member comments? Okay. Ms. Riley. I'll go first. Um, I just want to thank um, Marie for coming up here. I think she already left. Oh, no, there she is. <clears throat> um, because every time she comes up and speaks, whether it's in front of the Board of Ed or Town Council, she's always super positive, and that's a great thing because we do have a lot of awesome things going on at Enfield, and what we learned about tonight is another truly awesome thing. Um, and thank you, Marianne, also for coming up and speaking. You guys both had some great questions. Um, I know that as time goes on, we'll have more answers, um, and I think that the superintendent will probably come out with either a press release or might provide more answers at a town council meeting or something to address those specific issues and questions. Um, and I wanted to um, thank the student representatives for coming when they do come, um, because I know that you guys don't get thanked a lot, so I just wanted to thank for you guys for coming out. <laughs> um, and then I would, I also want to echo the superintendent, you know, if you're having an issue, you know, at school, your, your child's having an issue, the first place you want to go is to the principal. Because if you come to us or the superintendent, that what's going to happen is the call is going to go to the principal and they're going to ask what's going on and the principal is going to have to investigate. So first stop should be the principal. Um, and definitely not Facebook or Twitter because those people are not going to have the answers that you need. They might be what you want to hear, but I doubt that it will be the correct answer. Um, you know, and then if you don't get what you need from the principal, then move up from there. You know, and I encourage people to come to our meetings and speak and tell us, you know, what you think we're doing wrong or what we're <coughs> doing right, you know, and give us criticism and everything. But you know, I think if you have an issue that relates to a specific student or a teacher, that has to be done, you know, through email or phone calls because we want to protect the privacy of our students and our staff. Um, so I would just ask that you be respectful of that. Um, but otherwise, that was all I had for tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Uh, anyone else? Mr. Ryder? Or, yeah, let's start at the end. Mr. Ryder. Um, so if I could just ask the gentleman from ETV to put a picture up that I'm going to speak to, uh, because this afternoon at Eli Whitney School, uh, the entire school participated in a special celebration. Uh, Congressman Joe Courtney was there, uh, a couple of uh, Board of Ed members were there, um, and we were there to honor um, one of our students, Maggie Griffin, who won an essay contest um, that she participated in with hundreds of schools. Um, Basically, all of Congressman Joe Courtney's area was split into two, so she competed against thousands of other students between third and eighth grade, uh, and she wrote an essay that jumped off the page, uh, using their words, um, and I just wanted to acknowledge that tonight publicly and to share a photo that uh, Walter took of our our student certificate. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a great afternoon, uh, it was a great presentation, and I just wanted to thank um, Everybody at Eli Whitney, including the principal, Ms. Dipple, and the amazing staff there. Um, they have one of the most cohesive groups of teachers that we have in our district. And I'm very proud to work with them on a lot of their fundraisers and special events, including what we got to experience this afternoon. So I just want to acknowledge Maggie's accomplishment and to thank the staff at Eli Whitney. So thank you. Don't, don't give me credit for the picture. It was the superintendent that took the picture. I just forwarded it to ETV. <laughs> Mr. Neville. Just a couple of uh, comments. First of all, you know, as we've all said, many thanks to the goal team. It's great to have them come up with a 
positive solution to deal with a problem that we've all been aware of. And to bring our kids back home again, as other folks have said as well, is the most critical thing. We need to have that happen because we can do a better job. We have a great town and uh, we have great resources uh, in our staff and I'm convinced that uh, this is the uh, right and positive move for us to make. To, our, to Jacqueline and the other students who are taking AP exams, I, I know what it's like and I wish you well. We brought back all these AP exams so that we could give you a challenge and now you're up, to, up I'm sure you're all up to that challenge. So I wish you all well, be well rested, eat a good breakfast and good luck. Uh, the, uh, just a couple of comments to Ms. Pizna and uh, uh, Ms. Turner. Thank you for being so positive and coming up here. You know, we need to hear that. I think particularly in terms of Mr. Dresick's comments, this is a really, really good town, you know, and I've been here for a long time and my kids have gone here. Wonderful experiences. I think it's a great town to live in and I've decided I'm going to stay here. I'm not, I'm retiring and here in, in Enfield because it's that good a town. And uh, people ask me why I'm building a new garage in my house, I'm adding to it instead of downsizing, is because I like this town and I'm committed to it. And I appreciate your comments along that same line. Uh, finally, to Mr. Dresick, we've all been frustrated with what's gone on, particularly you as our, as our leader. You and your team have done a great job and I know how frustrating this is to us. I can only imagine what it's like to you guys. I, I would go further with it, but I don't think I could more be more articulate than you have been tonight. So I'll leave it alone and just say thank you and well done. Thank you, Mr. Neville. Ms. LeBlanc. Uh, yeah. Um, I just want to say how pleased I am about the, the Eagle Academy. Um, just having been on the board and having kids in the school system, um, you get to know a lot of teachers and you get to, to know a lot of people. And um, I think this is something great for Enfield. I will say this, this is my fourth term on the board, and I want to say that this is probably my most exciting term. Um, we've implemented a lot of positive things in Enfield, the Eagle Academy. Um, last term we, um, we consolidated the, the high school that, that finalized. Um, we've also gotten our early learning center at Stowe. And one of the things I find is that um, the superintendent really leads us. Um, in a way that how they respect the district, how they respect the teachers. And one thing that we all know as a board is that um, we have a great staff and we have great principals. And those people come into this profession because they're here to help. They want to help kids. They want to help people. They want to help families. They do not want to help themselves. I mean, they're not here to make lucrative salaries. I mean, we know, um, you know that teachers do this because they love it. So unless you're real willing to reach out to these teachers or these principals and you're posting on Facebook, um, I'm not sure that you're gonna get the help you need. These people care about the kids more than I've ever seen. You'll hear a teacher say, I care about the kids in my class as if they were my own kids. Um, the same with the principals. I think that um, Chris leads this district along with Andy in a way to show us that these teachers are the champions because I think that for a little while that was lost in transi translation with other boards and other superintendents. Um, I can't thank the teachers enough for what they've done. I know the job isn't easy as a parent. I know it's not easy to be a parent and sometimes it's really hard to have to go to a principal or a teacher and, and say to them, my child's struggling in class because I'm another child or um, it's, it's not always a good place and a fun place to be. But I think that the teachers are there for them the parents, they're, they've been there for me, they've been there for the students. So um, I appreciate the superintendent uh, reading that statement tonight um, because I know for me personally, I really care about the town. I think we all do. Um, as a parent, I tend to take what I read to heart. You'd think I'd have thick skin after all these years. Um, but I have a huge sense of community, like I said, during the Eagle Academy. So. I just hope that people can take the superintendent's advice, go to the principal, go to the teachers, and get the help you need. And if the help isn't there, there will be help along the way. Um, because I've never seen a more caring group of people that work in this town. Um, and a lot of them live in this town, so they care about it just as much as we do. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. LeBlanc. Mr. Rutledge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, through the chairman to the assistant superintendent, Bruins are up two to nothing at the end of the first, so go Bruins. Um, but uh, other than that, I know you were looking forward to those scores here, but uh, um, one thing to just bring up, uh, 
um, learned this from the Enfield Foundation for Excellence in Education. May 6th to May 10th is Teacher Appreciation Week. I know we probably all know teachers that we'd like to recognize. And if you go onto their Facebook page um, for a very modest donation, I think the minimum donation is $7. You can actually recognize a teacher for the great work um, they're doing in Enfield and in Enfield schools. Um, I happen to know a couple that I plan on recognizing. So uh, um, all you have to do is go to their Facebook page and the information's there. And as pretty much everything else has been said about everything from the um, new, the, and the Eagle Academy to the social media issues, I'll uh, let that uh, dead horse lie. So thank you. Mr. Renier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, sorry for being a little physically late. Um, the acoustics in my car are great. I was able to listen to the entire meeting. Uh, and to prove that point, I know that we don't have one student rep because of a corporate issue. Um, and Chris needs reading glasses for the goal presentation. So, um, but I, I wanted to say that was uh, a wonderful presentation put on by uh, the staff. And uh, I think the Eagle Academy is going to be a very positive thing for our town. Um, and bringing the kids back home is one of the biggest uh, assets I think we can do. And I think we owe it to the town. Um, and I wanted to say um, thank you uh, to the superintendent and for the uh, remarks that he had made. Um, I think oftentimes um, things go overlooked or, or not everyone knows things that the district is doing. Um, and I think it's, it's good that we are able to um, present what the school is doing, present what groups are doing. Uh, not necessarily that we need to, uh, but the fact that we have these established groups already doing the work um, and doing the wonderful things that are out there. Um, and as you said, and everything that you said was flawless, and I just wanted to commend uh, the superintendent for his comments this evening. Um, I don't think you know, out of all the, all the towns and, and cities in, in, in Connecticut, I don't think any of them have a better superintendent than we do here in Enfield. Um, and his contract's not up this year, right? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I wasn't putting a plug in for any raises. I was just saying he was great uh, next year. Um, but no, he's, uh, he's done great for this, um, for this community um, and his broad visions and his, his great ideas uh, to really make this a unified town, I think speaks volumes. Uh, and thank you this evening uh, for the comments that you had made. Um, it's not always easy. Being a board member, as, as nine of us know, and our predecessors know as well, um, people always like to either take jabs at us for what they perceive we are doing or not doing or what we can or can't do. Uh, a lot of people are ignorant to what laws are that are out there. A lot of people are ignorant to uh, processes, procedures. A lot of people are ignorant to the fact that we should do something just because we sit up here on a dais and, and have an hour and a half to two hours and, and fix the world. Uh, it's not that easy. It's not. Um, we're not going to fix the world. We're going to help create a great school system with the with the lead of our superintendent. Um, it's 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 fantastic idea to think that we are these great change agents for the entire uh, systematic approach for how the town does things. We're not. It's a team, and, and we've talked about us being a team. We've talked about how we need community support. We've talked about how we need parent support. So at the end of the day when we have issues that come up either on social media or phone calls or people stop us at the grocery store, it, it's not just us. It's not just Andy and Chris. It's, it's everyone in the community. It's the parents, right? At the end of the day, we have to hold ourselves accountable. We have to hold our neighbors accountable because what we do here isn't going to affect what happens on Highland Street or on Abbey Road, okay? We need the community to step up and help with this too. And don't just slap us in the face as Board of Ed members because you perceive or you think that we have these superpowers, that we have these capes at night. We don't. We care a hell of about these kids. We dedicate our time. We volunteer so much time to do what? To help the kids in this town, to help the people in this town. And to say anything that's counterproductive to that is just stupid. So if you have something to say negative about the Board of Ed, do two kind acts in the community. Then you can come and, and, and tell me something negative. But do two kind acts first. Let me know what those are. And then tell me what I can do to improve myself, what other nights I can dedicate to help someone else. Because until that time happens, your comments are, are, are void and, and mute. And there's just no need for that. So thank you, Mr. Um, 
Superintendent, thank you, Mr. Chair, for leading us. We have about five more months, and it's going to be a great five more months. And unfortunately, we we uh, we have to say goodbye during the summer months and only meet once. It's going to be sad, but we'll get through it. Uh, so I just wanted to thank you and thank everyone that's watching. I thought for a minute I had to go get the dip flipper to there for a minute. <laughs> so I'm last. So now, to add on everybody's comments, there's two F words that are in my vocabulary. The one you guys know, but the second one I don't want to hear anymore is Facebook. I'm <laughs> done with it. I've had it. If you got a problem, either bring it to this table or bring it to my email that's right there on the screen right now, but don't put it on Facebook, just like the superintendent said. I've been talking about this for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I'm at the point where that's it. So my two F words from now on, I'm not using them anymore. My email is right there on the screen. If you don't like what I'm saying, send me one. I'll get it right now. But don't put crap on Facebook. And don't make our teachers look bad on Facebook. These people work hard. These people work hard. We all work hard. And you guys have been on Facebook, and that's it. No. It stops, and it stops now. Simple as that. Buzz Robotics is going out to Detroit for the, um, their national conference. So good luck to Buzz. This weekend is, there, is the nationals in Detroit. So I'll say a prayer for him that we hopefully bring something home. Uh, thank you for uh, Congressman Courtney for uh, recognizing the student at Lydia Whitney today. That was a great surprise for everybody <laughs> nobody knew she was even surprised but she had a, she had an idea because her parents were sitting in the back so she had an idea <laughs> something was coming on but we but we but we we told her at the end you're not grounded or nothing you did you did good so and that's it number 10 unfinished business approval of remaining 4000 series policy second reading Mr. Radier. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So as the policy committee has finished up the 4,000 series, this is the last in the series. Uh, this is approving it, and it will be posted online once it's official tonight. So do I have a motion to approve the second reading? Second. To move by Mr. Neville, seconded by Mr. Rutledge. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Riley? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Mr. Neville? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Renier? Yes. Mr. Rutledge? Yes. Chairman Cruzel? Yes. Motion passes. Number 11, new business, approval of Youth Mental Health and Wellness Advisory Council, MOU. Mr. Dresick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to welcome Jean Hoy and state for the record that I don't owe her anything for this. Jean is our Youth and Family Services Director at tonight's meeting. Uh, Jean's here to discuss the enclosed MOU for the Youth Mental Health and Wellness Advisory Council. Uh, also enclosed is a memo and a resolution. Uh, the, memo, the MOU requires approval from the Town Council as well as the Board, and the Council approved this MOU on Monday, April 15th. Therefore, the Board may take action as deemed appropriate regarding approving the Youth Mental Health and Wellness Advisory Council MOU presented and authorize the Superintendent to endorse it on its behalf. Please. I don't know if oh, I was I'm vibrating. so excited to be here, but I think you still owe me. This is late. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say how happy I am over the years when we first started the Suicide Prevention Steering Committee with the amazing partnerships that we've had between school and town that we've gained our understanding and, and broadened our scope and our understanding of risk factors and best practices to address suicide. Um, that we have we're now to this point we were worried about sustainability we wanted to make sure that this work stayed in place um, from those early years we now broadened to trauma-informed school mental health um, to building out um, training and resource development that's really given given us skills and learning what we need to do in terms of best practice to suicide prevention to substance use prevention um, school climate which funds your uh, Rachel's challenge or whatever program you would choose to to select next. So I'm really delighted to say the town council passed this. Um, so it is now a two-year MOU. Um, and I'm hoping you will approve Chris Dresick to sign it. Um, it will sustain our work. 
and it gives appreciation to how we've morphed over the years. I want to give a shout out to Tim Neville, Bridget Birchall, Tom Renone, who really worked on kind of forming out, formulating what we needed to do, and we've created this MOU. So I want to thank you for your amazing work, and I look forward to many, many years of building this work out. So Part just to add, the, the council did approve this at their April 15th meeting. So any questions from the... I'd just like Mr. to uh, just throw a, 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 a salute to Jean. Uh, we've been working together for years, and uh, you know, we owe you more than you owe us in terms of uh, you know, Mr. Dressick's comments. But the work that you do, the, the money that you've brought back in terms of grants to get good things for our kids, to service the needs of our kids, is just phenomenal. Like, and I, you know, I've been working with you hand-to-hand -hand for, forever, and, it, and uh, it's, I wouldn't keep coming back year after year if I, if I didn't appreciate and respect the quality of the work that you do and, and, and the reason why you do it, which is for the good of our kids. So thank you thank very you. much. So I need a motion to approve the so move moved by Mr. Neville, seconded by Mr. Radier. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Riley? Yes. Mrs. LeBlanc? Yes. Mr. Neville? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Renier? Yes. Mr. Rutledge? Yes. Chairman Cruzel? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Never even. Never even. 11B. Are we getting a copy of that MOU? Do we get a copy of that MOU? Do we get a copy of that MOU or? Okay. Oh, because I don't see it in there. It's in there? Okay. All right. Oh, oh, there, okay, there's a resolution. Now. Okay, I see it now. Sorry. I see it now. Yes, I see it. Thank you. No, that's fine. This is fine. I didn't see it. It got in there with all the policy stuff. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm good. 11B, action, if any, regarding approving Enfield Teachers Association contract, Mr. Drozik. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And any other year, any other board meeting, this would probably be the biggest topic of discussion. <laughs> However, given the circumstances of this evening, I don't want to minimize it, but it is an actually a big deal. Um, before you guys get an opportunity, you all have a tentative agreement between the Enfield Board of Education and the Enfield Teachers Association in front of you uh, on a new three-year contract between the board and the Enfield Teachers Association. Um, what I want to say is that this didn't happen uh, by accident, and this didn't happen um, necessarily this happened a lot easier than it has in years past as some of you who have lived through this process will know um, but that the reason that this process went as well as it did uh, was because of the people that were involved and I don't want to embarrass her on local television but the Enfield Teachers Association president Emily Hulovich is in the room this evening but I also want to recognize Todd Kucher who is the former Enfield Teachers Association president but still active as their PR and R chair uh, and Gray Wanzer, who is their lead negotiator for the, for the teachers' union and also a former past president of the union. Um, some of you can recall um, going through contract negotiations has, hasn't been fun for either side in years past. And a number of years ago, we reached out to each other after years of having conversations and a mutual respect for each other and realized that there's a better way to do this. And the better way to do that was a commitment by the board at the time and now the board this evening um, that we all see we all are striving to achieve the same goal and that's what's best for our kids and we all recognize just how important our teachers play in that role and as somebody said earlier our champions for our kids are our teachers on the front lines um, and having that mutual respect and having a dialogue we were able to to for the second time and I'm, I'll, I'll bet history but I, I'm not that old um, that we were able to reach a settled agreement between the the board and the in the, which the board had given me authorization to enter into a tentative agreement with um, and then Field Teachers Association on a three-year contract without the need of actually going into formal negotiations. Uh, and the relationship is, is, is so well on both sides that we were able to have productive, off-the-record conversations to make sure that we were all in, the, in, a, in a good place and making sure that each side was taken care of and most importantly that our teachers know that they're supported and they're supported by the board and the community. So I want to thank Emily in her first year as president. I got her out of talking at convocation, but I made her go through a contract negotiation, yeah. um, which actually didn't technically exist. Uh, just to put it into perspective, the contract has to be ratified by the board, which you'll do this evening, and, and the board members have the right to choose as they will. Uh, but the union has already ratified the agreement, overwhelmingly, at a 95% approval rating. So 
in doing this so many years, you always realize when both sides kind of walk away with not everything they want, you know it's a good and a fair deal. Um, I can't say any, any greater that this is a good and a fair deal, not just for the board, not just for the teachers, but really at the end of the day to support our kids and, and the people who support them on the front line. So I want to thank the three, the three negotiating team, and, and really on behalf of them, all of their members, because the, the, member, the membership of the ETA pick great leaders, and it's evident in, in, the, in the relationship we have with them. So you have a tentative agreement in front of you. You can entertain a motion to accept it, and at this point, depending upon the outcome, the next step would be moving on to the town council for approval. So do I have a motion to accept, the, approve the Enfield Teachers Association contract? Moved by Mr. Rutledge, seconded by Mr. Neville. Any other discussion? Go ahead, Mr. Laney. I just wanted to thank the ETA for um, years and years of sacrifices for the town. Um, when I first got onto the board, um, you guys took such, such a hit to help the kids of this town when other unions in this town decided to either increase pay or benefits um, when push come to shove you guys really went forward and worked with us um, and at the end of the day I, I thank you guys so much as a union member myself um, people want more money people want more things people want this they lose they lose sight of what's actually they're working towards and, and working for. Um, and I'm in the human service field, so I work with people. And at the end of the day, when they say, oh, we got you a 3% raise, it's like, great, but how are you helping me help others? Um, and I thank you guys for that. And, and I see how gracious everyone from the ETA is. Um, they're, at, they're at community events handing out books. They're, they're building benches. They're doing everything for this town. Um, you are part of us. And I just wanted to thank you. And if you could just thank your membership. You guys mean so much to us. You guys mean so much to this town. And what you've done over the years. It, this, this contract is great. Um, and, and I believe that you guys deserve everything that, that's in here. And going forward, you guys just you rock. You rock stars. You really are. So thank you. Um, and I think this is a great uh, agreement, and I look forward to voting on it tonight. Mr. Neville. To the ETA, thank you. Uh, you've come through in good times and bad times. You've, whenever we've needed you, or our kids needed you in, in, in particular, you've always stepped up to the plate. <laughs> uh, you know, th this kind of relationship doesn't happen by accident. It happens because you're here for the same reasons that we're here. We're here for those kids. We understand what we have to do. We understand what the needs of the community are, and you've stepped up. So I've always felt that the most important educational resource, when we start fighting for educational resources, is to have a competent and capable teacher in front of our kids, in front of the classroom. So thank you for everything you do. Anyone else? I want to just echo same. I mean, we have our we have our bad days. September 10th is a reminder. I still have the message on my phone, and we have today with the uh, Eagle Academy. So we we couldn't do it without you guys, and you guys are and we're behind you 100. percent You are right on the front lines, and we're supporting you from the back. So thank you. Roll call, please. Mrs. Riley, absolutely yes. Mrs. LeBlanc, yes. Mr. Neville? Yes. Mr. Wrighty? Ryder? Yes. Everybody's messing Everyone's up. Everyone's messing your name up tonight. Sorry. Mr. Renier? Yes. Mr. Rutledge? Yes. Chairman Cruzel? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Number 12, board committee reports. A curriculum. Uh, Mr. Renier, this is another enthusiastic report from the curriculum committee here. Uh, we had a meeting on the 16th. It was actually one of our shortest meetings, but uh, my comments are going to be a little bit long. Of course. Uh, hey, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> uh, uh, we had a presentation on the pre-K <coughs> STEAM project uh, from Project Lead the Way uh, and, and the Project Lead the Way units. Um, we're going to have some more materials for you, which we'll get out through Kathy uh, to you guys. But at the meeting, um, uh, Ms. Valley and Mr. Degg explained to the committee members about an opportunity with the new Project Lead the Way pre-K units to have a STEAM courses offered using Project Lead the Way curriculum units and training in grade um, pre-K to 12. I think we're one of the few districts that has STEAM training, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Dresick, pre-K to 12 right now, right? Okay. Uh, currently, we, we use uh, the um, 
Project Lead the Way in the STEAM courses in grades K through 8, as well as in some courses at the high school level. Mr. Degg explained that the training is offered by Project Lead the Way to those teachers that will use the units in their classrooms. Um, you, you actually have no access to the curriculum without attending the training, so it's a, it's a prerequisite. These units will support the current uh, K-2 to STEAM standards and engineering practices. They also align with science and math standards as well. Ms. Valley mentioned the different standards these units cover that align, such as measurement, cardiality, and understanding stories and information. These units also align with the pre-K standards related to gross and fine motor skills. We asked how much training is necessary and when it would take place and how much it would cost. There is a two-day training session that is required. Uh, Ms. Valley and the teachers would attend it over the summertime. Uh, Ms. Valley talked about the four modules that would be taught at the pre-K STEAM Academy next year, including health habits, life science, living and non-living things, matter, floating, and sinking, and spatial sense and coding. She explained that because Project Learn the Way reviewed both the NIAC and the Head Start standards before developing these modules, they all contain a strong family connection component, which will align with the program's NIAC requirements. We also asked about the time commitments for these units and how it will fit into the existing curriculum. They explained that each module is 10 hours, and because they were looking to bring this program in when they wrote their curricular units for, this, for their grant this year, they used these modules as starting points so that each module will enhance the existing curriculum units and not be something totally new. Uh, we were concerned as committee members how the family connection piece would work. It was explained that we do not have access to the curriculum, as I mentioned before, until after the training, but our other uh, project Lead the Way units have teacher resources that can be printed and distributed to the, to the families. Uh, Ms. Valley said she imagined sending materials home with students and having family nights to discuss them. Um, we asked how much it would cost, as I mentioned before, to implement. Uh, training and startup materials would be covered through the grant that's the, uh, that STEAM Academy currently has, so there would be no additional cost. Once that grant is up, the continuing cost would be uh, $750 a year for the license, as well as purchasing of consumable materials needed for the units. It was further explained that these consumable materials are items that we would already purchase uh, for a preschool classroom anyway, so it would not be an additional cost. It would be just a standard cost that we'd be doing on an annual basis. Uh, the committee was enthusiastic about the idea, and we're bringing it, we're bringing it forward uh, just really for consensus. It, it, because we're already doing it, we don't need to come back to the board to do something like this. So another great night at the curriculum committee, Mr. Renier. Any questions? Um. Media finance. Ms. Wright. Uh, um, we <coughs> met, and we are still on track with the budget. And um, our next meeting is on Monday, May 13th at 6 p.m. All are welcome. That's all I have. See policy, Mr. Redier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Neville, strap in. <laughs> we didn't meet. Um, <laughs> our next meeting is May 1st uh, in the superintendent's office. Thank you, Mr. Redier. D leadership, we had none. E joint facility. Um, we're working on the master plan. We're working on the second half of Barnard Roof, which is in the state's hands as we speak. We should be getting our reimbursement. Yeah, the the next all, the for is in, one, all the paperwork is phase one. All the paperwork from last summer should be like thirty to sixty days away. Yep. Yep. Anything else I missed? I don't think so. No, no, that's it for now. FJFK uh, building that we did not. Attend the last meeting because we were at the because we were at joint facility. My my understanding is that they uh, they had meetings with the um, the architects and the uh, constituent groups in the building. Uh, I think it was last week, yeah. right? and, um, and and met with you know got their input into it, and we'll bring that back to the committee, which I believe is this Thursday. And they do have the um, owner rep in line, yep. and I think the RFP for contractor is going out shortly. G short security. Um, our next meeting is on uh, May first. Okay. And no other additional committees. I know uh, the only thing was you have a uh, insurance meeting in June. June fourth. Yeah. June fourth. A special one they called. Mm -hmm. So thirteen approval of minutes regular board of ed meeting March twenty sixth two thousand nineteen. So moved. Moved by Second. Mr. Mr. Riley. Riley. <laughs> 
<laughs> Seconded by Miss LeBlanc. <laughs> Any discussion? Show of hands. We have seven zero zero. Number 14, approval of accounts and payroll, Miss Riley. Yes. The Finance Committee met on April 15th, 2019 to review financial statements for the month of March year to date and to examine various documents related to finances. Our review concluded there is nothing significant to report to the board. I move we accept the superintendent's certification as follows. I hereby certify that in the month of March, total expenditures amount to eight million five hundred ninety thousand five hundred ninety two dollars and ninety three cents broken down between payroll totaling six million forty nine thousand two hundred eighteen dollars twenty four cents and other accounts totaling two million five hundred forty one thousand three hundred seventy four dollars and sixty nine cents all payments have been made in accordance with the approved budget and are properly accounted for within the books of accounts Copies of approval for check invoices are properly documented. Motion made by Ms. Riley, seconded by Mr. Rutledge. Any discussion? All in favor? 7-0-0. Any line item transfers? There are no line item transfers. Any correspondence time. and communications? There are none. I will add during this time that we, I did send an invitation, speaking of communication, which I should have said during my comments, to our illustrious governor, and again, it was a no-show. So. <laughs> He could, could have sat in on a great presentation, which again, I'm sorry I didn't talk about that during my comments, but I figure communication is communication. And while I'm on communication, my email, I got no emails, so that's good too. I had just one more thing. One more communication. <clears throat> no, I just wanted to um, thank the superintendent. Uh, tomorrow evening, the PTO presidents at the, um, at the 10 Enfield School Buildings will be meeting with the superintendent and the assistant superintendent. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for that. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask the superintendent, you want to shoot your PTOs an email, um, we'll have an audience with Mr. Dresick tomorrow evening, so thank you. And I forgot to mention earlier that the Enfield Public Schools and Two Moms on a Mission egg hunt was rained out last Saturday, so we'll be doing that this Saturday at the Town Annex, 11.30 to 3, um, with the egg hunt, food trucks, activities, and more. Um, it was rained out last week, so it'll be this Saturday. Thank you. And just to add, I will be at that meeting tomorrow night, too, so. We do not have a need for executive session, correct? We do not. So do I have a motion to adjourn on TV? No, look at that. Motion by Ms. LeBlanc, seconded by Ms. Riley. Any discussion? All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you very much and good night.